One of the challenges with medical issues in this day and age is that people have to stay in the hospital a little bit longer than they need to in some cases just because they need to be monitored. So the idea with uh, Kinetic Care was really to try and get them out of the hospital sooner, get them home sooner. What if we could have people be comfortable in their own bed but still continue to monitor them, still allow their physicians and their nurses to be able to see what was going on. So that's kind of where everything started from and then we just figured out, okay, what other types of things do we need to do to build into this type of system to be able to provide those same type of services that they would get the hospital. So our application has a lot of different facets to it, but one of the facets to it is if uh, you came home from the hospital and if it detected any type of fall condition or if there was a heart problem, we had like a whole set of chain of events that would occur that would kind of alert the EMS folks, unlock the front door, kind of like flashlights and just kind of a whole bunch of things that would make it really, really easy for that person to get the care they needed. When you compare the scope of what we were working on, including the Dragon Board as sort of the, the central hub, um, when you compared how many different parts we had and how much of uh, someone's life that we would touch their their direct heartbeat all the way through how their house works. I think we had a very large in scope project and I think uh, people responded to that pretty well. The Dragon Board is essentially a self-contained PC. Um, it's got an onboard processor, a couple, it's got a HDMI port for connecting a monitor to it. It's got built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It's got power, it's got these little ports so you can plug in all kinds of sensors. And he was repeatedly impressed by how much it could do. Uh, as he worked on it some more, he kept coming up with, oh, it does this too. I didn't know that, that's great. My goal really is to have some kind of affordable price point under a hundred bucks for starters where you can just screw this to the wall and then if you need these additional sensors for various conditions like air, or humidity or things like that, hey, we tack them into the side for 10 bucks each, boom, 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 down the side. I think what also helped too is we had a, a story, a story not only that people could identify with, but a story about what we were trying to accomplish. I was the guy who was supposed to be here two years ago and, uh, sorry, um, my dad died two, two days before. He was on the floor 30 minutes before I knew he was down. And this would have saved his life. So it's a real deal. You know, coming to a hackathon is cool for a few reasons. We came in with a really good idea, and yeah, I'm sort of biased on that, but you got to see a lot of other really good ideas too. There was a team working outside, working on a completely different project. It was really fascinating. You start talking with folks and sharing Red Bulls and coffee, right? And you, you, you there's an exciting element to that. Lawrence, one of the Qualcomm guys, and his whole team were fantastic. So I'm talking with him about the situation on the board. He's like, oh no, you just do this and this. And I'm like, oh really, all right, cool. You know, when you have people like that at a hackathon backing you up, it's just a fantastic experience.